Greetings on a rather windswept day. Not the sort of day, in fact, that you'd want to go out stalking fish particularly, but it is stalking that we're here to talk about. And I've got one of the best stalkers in the business, stalkers of carp, that is, <laughs> John Hoff Gardner. Now, John, I know that you've had a blinding season. A little bird tells me that you've already caught five carp over 30 pounds this year using float tackle and a centre pin reel. So I've got two questions for you here on Total Fishing. One, when are you going to get yourself a proper reel? <laughs> That's, I think I'll have to have a word with you about it. <laughs> you that, may right? well do, but I'm only pulling your leg. I know you use it well. Two, though, seriously, John, you just seem to be able to turn up to places where everybody's out there in their bivvies and they've been fishing the lake for two days and getting the odd fish, but you just seem to turn up and extract these big fish from right under their noses. How do you do it? Um, can I say experience for one? Right. Um, studying your fish and the waters that you're about to fish. I mean, although people see me catch fish, they don't see the work that's entailed coming up to the capture of the fish. Right. Um, I've, I use a sunken float, which I've developed and become very successful with, which is um, a method that allows me to see when the fish actually pick up the bait. When you fish with a sunken float, this will overcome line bites. Not that saying that you won't get line bites, right. but you can distinguish by the, the movement of the float if it's a line bite or it's a fish picking up your bait. Right. And only on one occasion do I ever set the hook, and that is when the float lifts out of the water. Even right. if it lifts an eighth of an inch, I know the bait is in the carp's mouth. And, and I've watched you do this. I mean, everyone's a lollipop, isn't it? When exactly. that float pops out the water... It is a fish. It's a fish. Yeah. Okay, and now, I mean, that's fantastic in its own right, but there's a lot more to it than that. I mean, it's no good just turning up to the water and clumping around and turfing out a float. I mean, what else? If people want to do this at home, what well, else? If, they, they, if they want to do it themselves, one, they, they've got to approach the water with great stealth. Uh, I've been quoted as calling myself a hunter of carp, and I think this is very true. If you're going to hunt any animal, fish, or whatever, you've got to think like them. You've got to put yourself in a position where you could catch your tiger, lion, elephant or carp and the only way you can do this is for them not to know that you are there yeah so that is the very important fundamental and what and what about these john because people always laugh at me because i'm always wearing sunglasses but you do well, as well as you can see there's a good reason for it isn't there there is they're not sunglasses in fact mate, if i can correct you there they're yep, polaroid, they're polaroid glasses. which are a very important part of my kit this allows me to see through the surface of the water and deep down to the bottom. Um, depending on the sunlight, I don't know if people have read my articles, but I will only stalk with a fish uh, with the sun to my face. Yeah. Basically, so that I cast, I don't cast any shadows yeah. onto the water, and the sun helps me to peer in through the water yeah. onto the and bottom. And see what's going on That's down right. there. That's right. Because the bait is never presented until I see the fish come in that I want to catch. So you wouldn't cast into a swim until you know the fish are there feeding on your boat? No. Right. Okay. And, and this is shown by bubbles, small vortexes. Bubbles can be as small as a pinhead. So I mean you're looking for colouring of the water, things pop into the surface, but most importantly you want to try and see a car. I must see the which car. Which I know is what happened recently when you caught a very big fish ah. from Horseshoe Lake. Do you remember that one? Oh, I do. Can I say controversial fish, or...? If you like. <laughs> <laughs> if you but, but there you go, yes, that's, that's right. Um, once again, I did see the actual fish. Uh, but it was one of three fish, and it was the smallest of the three. Yeah. Um, which was unfortunate, but very gracious, very lovely fish. Well, I'll tell you what, I think what we should do right now is, is we'll stop talking, John, and we'll just take a quick look at that fish. 30-odd pounds of carp from the master of stalking himself. Take a look at this. That's a 30. It's the same one as I had the other day. 34. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Oh. Oh. 
It's not the same one. Okay, mate, that's actually a really nice shot. Now, even by your standards, Hoffy, that was pretty damn impressive. But let me tell you, folks, by the way, not only does this guy catch the odd big fish, he catches a lot of fish as well. Take a look at this. This is two hours fishing, folks, on the same day. Do you want to get under the snake on the left hand side? And as you can see, the rod is acting like a giant elastic. So we let the rod do the work. Lift his chin up to the surface and you can slide in it underneath. There we have it. As I say, not a giant fish, but what a pleasing fish. Thank you. Oh, in, but it's a fair look fish, I think it's fine. This is one of those that don't, doesn't really know he's been hooked yet. He doesn't know he's hooked. He does now, but surprisingly enough, I can see the hook now. Cleanly in it now. So even my foolproof method of the float lifting doesn't always work, look at that. Another nice fish. Another prestigious horseshoe fish. He's a tickle over 20 pounds. Not a bit of damage done to the fish. That's using the right tackle, the right method. I was after, but not bad, not bad. In, over. And another. Action. Oh. Shot off. Ah. Sorry, I can't speak much, but. Oh. Got to get him back from underneath that tree. 
Looks like another 20 to me. Or very close. Let's see. That's it. He's finished now. As long as I don't make any rash movements. Any sudden movement at this stage could send him tearing off again. And he's out. Not a mark in his mouth. And yet another!